If you own an F8X, M2 Comp, M3, or M4, you must do this. Today we have these two crank ups in front of us, the OEM three piece design, and in my right hand, the Vargas V2 spline lock crank up with integrated timing gear, all one piece so you cannot spin your timing. Uh, this crank hub positively locks itself in the nose of the crankshaft via these splines all the way around the crank hub. There are a few other options on the market. You have two pins and four pins and some other designs as well. But in my opinion, the Vargas is superior for the fact that it uses all of the surface area to transfer the load. If you know anything about load transfer, like in axles on a car, they use splines, not pins. Pins are more used to locate things. The reason for that is there's a lot more surface area on all of these splines than there is on four pins. And so that gives it a lot better positive lock on the piece to transfer the load. The factory design you'll see has nothing locking the oil pump gear and the timing gear together other than just the force of these things being squeezed together. So let's go ahead and get on with the install. All right guys, so I'm gonna give you a quick update on what we've done so far. All the underbelly pans have been pulled off, oil cooler hanging here. Fans out of the car. I just wanted to show you guys our timing tool through here. This red string coming down and that gold little handle up there is our crank pin tool. To get to that, we have this little guy on the side of the block there, the back of the engine, plugging that hole that the timing pin goes in to make sure that no dirt and debris ends up in there so that when you do need to do timing jobs, you can get to it. So we're gonna bring the car down though and show you the rest of the stuff. Most of it's from the top. Give you a quick look at what it looks like from below. You know, we got all our vacuum caps off. We got our crank pulley off, felt all the good things off. But yeah, we're gonna go ahead and bring it down. I'm gonna give you a quick overview from the top side of what we've done so far. All right guys, so here's a quick look from the top side. I'm gonna run you down really fast, kind of what we've done to get here. So to start, you're gonna take off your your carbon strut brace that runs from side to side. There's an aluminum brace at the back. You're gonna have to remove that. There are also some plastic panels back there you're gonna have to remove. There are some 10 millimeter bolts that hold on a cover for your engine. It kind of covers the back of the engine there to duct some of the hot air away from the AC inlets. So you're gonna have to remove that. Once you get that, you're gonna basically start tearing in on the valve cover. To do that, you'll have to remove your intercooler. You'll have to remove your charge pipes, your intakes, all that goodness. Uh, we've obviously removed the fan. We removed the belt. We removed the tensioner for the belt, the vacuum caps here. You will go ahead and remove those so you can gain access to all the timing stuff. Other things you will have to remove are these hard coolant lines, at least move them out of the way. The wiring harness to the turbos and to the rest of the valve cover has to be removed. The fuel rail has to be removed. You will leave your injectors in place. This is a great time to do your spark plugs. It also makes it a lot easier to turn the engine over with spark plugs out. So we've gone ahead and removed the spark plugs. Obviously you can see our timing tools are on here. When the motor is coming around to TDC, you will see a QR code on both cams on the top side. You're gonna use your tool to lock it into place. Then you will go ahead and put your trigger wheel tool on. And then we go and move to the bottom and put our crank pin in which we showed you previously other stuff you're gonna have to do is drain the coolant obviously uh, drain your oil and you know you will have to remove your lower hoses and there's an auxiliary water pump down here that bolts to the fan we just like to leave that hanging this is kind of the gist of what you have to do to get to the portion of the job which really consists of doing the timing chain and the crank hub so we're gonna go ahead and continue moving forward we are going to now that the motor is TDC we're going to break the crank bolt and also release the tensioner here and then we'll go ahead and break the cams we'll pull our Vanos actuators off the car uh, you do also have to pull your solenoids out forgot to mention that once we pull the actuators off and slacken the chain we'll actually be able to then at that point pull the crank hub out 
which we will show you in the next steps. That's kind of the gist. You're gonna have to basically just remove everything that's in the way to get to the valve cover and get that completely off. And everything that's in the way of your crank pulley and these vacuum caps out of the way so that you can access all your timing components. And that's pretty much the gist of it. It's really not that bad. The next part is where all of the skill kind of comes in. This is just tear down. For most of you guys that have worked on your car, this is nothing new. This portion of the job is gonna be really where all the, the meat of this video is in. So let's go ahead and move forward. We're gonna break the crank bolt real quick and the tensioner and the cam bolts will continue to pull everything apart. All right guys, this is what it looks like with the cam bolts broke free. Your trigger wheels will spin free. We've removed our trigger wheel tool to align that. Our crank up bolt has been broken. Hopefully you guys can see that. I'm turning it by hand. The tensioner was also removed. I like to put some paper towels over here to catch the oil when that comes out. Uh, we've also gone ahead and removed the two E8s here. There's a T40 here and a T50 or 45 down there that we've gone ahead and removed. Uh, that gives us a little bit more play on the timing cassette and will allow us to slip the crank hub out and in more easily. Um, so we're gonna go ahead now and pull these Vanos actuators completely off the car. You're just gonna kinda jiggle them free like that. I'm going to set the camera down because it's very hard to do uh, with one hand, but that's basically what you're gonna do. You're gonna pull one off at a time. You guys can see this little red guy here. There's a hole here and there's a hole back behind the chain. You have to push the oil pump tensioner in and then push this little plastic red piece in, which will keep the chain slacked on the oil pump. You can see here, hopefully, that I'm jiggling it. Let's see on the other side, you can kind of see that it's loose. Either way, that's gonna loosen the chain so that you can go ahead and slip your crank up out without the oil pump gear kind of binding on the crank hub itself. I'm gonna spin this bolt out and I'll take a couple of the crank pulley bolts that go around the surrounding of it and use two of those to just yank it out. So we're going in, we're threading in our little crank pulley bolts here. You'll see the crank hub's already loose and wanting to come out. So we'll go ahead and kind of just jiggle that. There's our crank hub right there, guys. We're gonna go ahead and get the rest of the pieces out of the motor and show you what the full complete crank hub looks like and what it looks like in that hole right now, but that's basically the gist. You can actually see the crank sprocket, the main sprocket there on the timing cassette. We're gonna fish our hand in there, pull that up and out. Here is our main drive gear for the timing chain. So we're gonna go ahead and slip that back on our crank hub and we'll continue. On with the job, here's your whole timing cassette. We're gonna go ahead and set that on the table over here. Now, if we look down in here, all you're gonna see is our oil pump gear and our oil pump chain. Let's see if we get some more light in here. Down up in there. So now we're gonna fish that second sprocket out, which uh, there's a little cover, there's a little guide. Let me show you this guide. There is one of these kind of up in there between the gears, like this, supporting it. And so when you go to pull this sprocket off, it's gonna break this plastic piece because it's literally in the car like that. And so when you go to yank it off the car, it's gonna pop that plastic piece off. Don't be alarmed. You gotta get a new one. You gotta replace it. But uh, we'll show you that here in a second. We're gonna go ahead and pull that gear out. Give you a quick look through the front so you can see what it looks like right now. That's what it looks like with the piece in there. So when we go to yank this gear out, that thing's gonna pop out and break. This is what it looks like through here with the tensioner. Tensioner's all the way pushed in. You can see here, hopefully, what it looks like with the tool in place. And that's kind of the, the gist of it. So we're gonna go ahead and get that sprocket changed out and that new piece in and our new Vargas crank hub in the car. So let's go ahead and keep moving forward. All right, guys, be very careful when you do pull this oil pump sprocket out because there are some like welded on friction washers on the front and the back. When I pulled this one off, the friction washer actually fell down in the oil pan and was sitting down in the oil pan and I was able to fish my finger through it and pull it up. But you can lose these inside the motor and you do not want to. So when you pull the thing apart, you wanna make sure that you have both friction washers on your oil pump drive gear and the additional friction washer that's on your crank hub between the mid, uh, main gear, main timing chain gear. You can see here, there's a friction washer here. You wanna make sure all that stuff comes out and doesn't stay in the motor. All right guys, so here's that little piece too that I was talking about that broke. I was actually able to fish it out today without it breaking. Usually these little pop fingers will break off. Today it didn't. For peace of mind, for the $7 that it costs, we're always just gonna put a new one in. 
um, for the fear of this thing getting brittle or you know not holding like it originally did. It does also look like the factory does put some type of glue to hold the thing from falling. We obviously can't really do that putting it back together. The main thing that I think is important is that you just change this piece. So we're gonna go ahead and put our new oil pump sprocket in and our new holder retainer and then we'll slip our Vargas crank hub one piece solution into the car. So let's go ahead and do that. All right guys, so like I said, it's very hard to see these things sometimes. Like right now, if you look at it, you can't even really tell if it's there. You can see the little spot welds where it's been tacked on. If you take a pick after you pull it off, if you're curious, if it's there or not, you can see um, we've gone ahead and kind of pulled it up. So I like to do that if I'm unsure when I pull the sprocket out. Obviously this is an old one, so it doesn't matter. We can destroy this thing if we wanted to. We're not going to, we're gonna keep it for the customer, but basically I like to do that just to make sure that I got my friction washers out of the car. You can see how that can be very hard to tell. Just a tip, something else to note, if you look at these teeth side by side, hopefully you guys can tell, mm -hmm. the new one is actually quite a bit wider on the gap. These have shrunk from the time of being in the car, as well as the little teeth on the edges almost seem to have kind of like broken off. Like at first glance, it looks like it's intact. Don't reuse this, get a new one. All right guys, this is what it looks like with the crank out. Your change is kind of gonna fall down. Uh, when you go to put your new sprocket in, you will have to kind of pull that up and fish the new sprocket in there. And then that little piece that we were talking about that breaks clips in in those two holes right there. So we'll get the sprocket in and then we'll put that piece in which will hold the gear in place. And then we will continue to move forward with the crank hub install and slip in our Vargas crank hub. Here's a quick look at what it looks like from above. You've got pretty good view of everything when the timing cassette is out and your vacuum caps and everything are off. You do not need to pull the oil pan for the Vargas. If I was doing a drilled hub, I would definitely probably pull the pan. Um, there are some other options on the market for doing it without pulling the pan, but we really prefer the Vargas crank hub due to the fact that there's no drilling and it's a much quicker install and there is no metal shavings that can potentially end up in your motor. So let's go ahead, let's get this new oil pump drive gear in and our little retaining clip and the crank hub. All right guys, uh, gonna give you a quick look at our new oil pump sprocket gear in place and our new retaining guide. You can see everything is nice and on track. You wanna visually inspect and make sure the timing chain is still sitting flush on all the guides and hasn't popped off left or right. Uh, the other thing you're gonna to wanna to do is wipe down all of these surfaces for the vacuum caps and your front crankshaft main seal. The other thing I didn't say, but you're gonna to wanna to remove your old crankshaft seal and get it ready for the new seal to go in so we've cleaned everything up. We are going to install our Vargas crank hub and the timing is set now, but here's a quick look at what it looks like before. We can still have our timing tool installed. You can see the guide and everything through here. And then one more look down below. So now that all that stuff is in, we're gonna go ahead and grab the Vargas V2 crank hub and the timing cassette. We're gonna slip the timing cassette down into the engine and then we're gonna fish our crank hub into the chain and get it splined up on the timing chain. And then we'll pull the slack up and we'll do the initial torque on the Vargas crank hub, which is 75 foot pounds. So let's go ahead and get that done. Getting the chain on the crank hub is quite fiddly. I'm gonna turn the crank hub so you guys can see. The crank hub is moving the chain down there. Getting the chain over the sprocket is very important. It's very fiddly. You kind of have to slack all the chain in the guide here. Make sure you kind of go through this hole and visually peek as well as move the chain onto the sprocket. So now that we've done that, um, everything is in here but it's loose. We're gonna swap this bolt out for the new bolt we're going to do our initial torque of 75 foot pounds which is going to lock the crank hub in and keep it from moving and then we will continue to assemble the motor let's go ahead and do that
All right, guys, um, we have everything loosely together, still have the tensioner out of it. Um, all the bolts are still loose. Everything can still shift a little bit. I can even turn this by hand. You can see the crank hub moving just a little bit left and right. Um, but I want to talk about some torques real quick. So you've got a screw down in here for the crankcase um, section of the timing guide. This guide is 20 newton meters. The one here on the cylinder head, that's 14 newton meters. And these two E8 bolts are eight newton meters. So eight newton meters, 14 newton meters, and 20 newton meters for the guide pins. Now that we have all of that together, we are gonna set up our timing tool for the trigger wheels. So the trigger wheels are in the right place. Obviously our cam tool is still on and our crank pin is still in. So the motor is still locked at TDC. Once we put our tools on, we're gonna do the initial torque of 75 foot pounds on this before we do put our tensioner in. And the reason for that is if we put our tensioner in now, it will kind of kick the crank hub sideways and make the thing walk sideways and not want to seat perfectly. So we have to torque that to 75 foot pounds before we put the tensioner in. Once we torque that to 75 foot pounds, then we can put our tensioner in and then we can actually do the initial torque on our cams. And then once all that's together, we'll do the final torque on the crank hub. We've torqued it, but I just want to show you again, the tensioner's still out of it, cam bolts, everything's still loose. We just want to set the initial torque on the Vargas crank hub to get it seated in the crank. So we've gone ahead and clicked it in at 75, probably can't see that, but 75 foot pounds. So now we're going to go ahead and move to the top and finish up the rest of the timing stuff. All right, guys, um, we have the crank hub torqued to 75 foot pounds. Like I said previously, we've already torqued all the timing guides, so everything is located as it should be. We've gone ahead and thrown on our tone wheel uh, alignment tool to make sure our little tone wheels are in the correct position. We have our cam tool in and our crank pin in, so everything is still at TDC. You guys will need these timing tools. They want you to use these, but the spec on this is 0.4 newton meters, which is like nothing. It's literally finger tight to keep all of the slack out of the chain and keep it taut. Now that we have that installed, we're gonna go ahead and lock in our cam bolts. They're 20 newton meters plus 180 degrees. I'll start on the intake cam and then do the exhaust cam. A lot of time I'll actually just lock in 20 newton meters and then I'll go and do the additional 180 degrees after. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. We've snugged down our tensioner and uh, basically everything is as it should be. I like to take one last look and make sure the chain doesn't look bound up anywhere. Everything looks free and true as it should be. So we're gonna go ahead and lock in these cams. Once we do that, we'll remove all of our timing, timing tools. We'll turn the motor over two rotations on the crank, one rotation for the cam, and then we'll verify the timing is the same. And if it is, then we'll go ahead and complete the assembly of the engine. We'll do the final torque on the crank hub, which is 270 degrees of rotation. And we'll continue to assemble everything. We'll give you the torques for these plugs and all that stuff and the valve cover um, as we go. But yeah, we're almost there. Crank hub is in. We still need to install our vacuum caps and front main seal and whatnot. But you know, the main purpose of this job is to kind of show you guys what is required to do your crank hub. It's quite intensive. There's quite a few tools that you're gonna need. We'll be linking those down in the description. This is the gist of doing your crank hub. So let's go ahead and continue and get this thing done. <laughs> guys so we just turned the engine over 720 degrees via the crankshaft 360 degrees on the cams timing tool went on nice and smoothly on the cams we're about to take the car up and make sure the crank pin goes in and as long as the crank pin slides in nice and easy we're gonna know our timing is correct and we'll be able to throw the valve cover on and everything together and not be worried about anything I have gone ahead and removed the tensioner here our little uh, tensioner tool uh, I removed that little red piece that was here. So the tension has been applied to the oil pump gear as well. Now we're gonna go ahead and lift the car up, check the timing from below, verify, and put the thing back together. All right guys, hopefully you can see this timing tool. We're gonna go ahead and slide it back in. So the timing tool is pinned, it popped in really nice. Everything's feeling good. You can actually see when he goes left to right, you can actually see the timing tool cock. See that? Yeah. So you can see it catching on the left and right stops. 
every time he goes left and right with the crank. Um, there's very, very, very little movement. We're talking about the tiniest one degree of movement, you know, the little bit of play that there is in this pin. So we're gonna go ahead and pull that out. That will verify our timing is good. And we're gonna put the car back together. All right, guys, before you put your crank seal in, you're gonna need this Loctite 171000. You put it right on the edges of where the block and the upper pan come together. You're also gonna need this, uh, we'll link it down in the description below, but it's like uh, the sealant. And there's actually like a little tip that is separate. And then there's an, a tool that you'll need, CTA 3801. This is to uh, compress the bottle. You'll spin this in, which will make it inject, once I get down all the way, from the tip. And then uh, we're gonna squirt it right on the block where it meets the upper section of the pan. We'll get a little bit coming out the tip here in a second. There it is, you see it flowing out the tip there. Right here at the block, you can see the green primer and that goo goes right at the crack all the way down in there on both sides. And then we're gonna go ahead and install our crank seal using our crank install tool kit. You will definitely need this. Valve cover surface meeting area is all clean and wiped down. We've gone ahead and installed our new valve cover gaskets. See them here? On the inside there's three and all the way around the perimeter. There are some little circles. Those will end up going on the driver's side of the valve cover here with this little nipple here. Here's the old gaskets. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead and drop this bad boy on and get it torqued on there. Uh, we also have gone ahead and installed our Vano solenoids, torqued those to eight newton meters, as well as one of the additional vacuum caps right here. So we've tapped that in. It's about a 16th of an inch below the surface. I don't know if you guys can see, but there's a decent little lip there. Make sure to pay attention to little stuff like that. Uh, obviously the front main seal has been installed as well. And uh, yeah, we're just doing the final assembly. So let's go ahead and get this valve cover on. All right, guys, so we're changing out the spark plugs. Here are the old spark plugs. All the vacuum caps, main seals, bolts, valve cover gaskets. We do have our new valve cover gaskets in and torqued down. We put our intake pipe in, that torques to uh, 10 Newton meters, as well as our Vano solenoids. We still have to install this secondary vacuum cap. One of the last things we're gonna do. Uh, right now we're torquing in the new spark plugs. We have four out of six in. I'm gonna show you guys real quick. What I do to gap them, this is my little gap tool. I'm gonna set this up here. So right now, um, this is a 22, 0.022 thousandths of an inch. Uh, factory comes about 0.028. So what we're gonna do is put it in this tool and then cinch this guy down. And uh, we're just gonna go a little bit, pull it out and check it until we get that 0.022 gap we're looking for. All right guys, these last two spark plugs are gapped at 0.022 and ready to go in. So let's go ahead and put them in the car. We're almost there. Uh, last couple things to do are just get these spark plugs in, get our coil packs in, get our injector harnesses clipped in, our grounds, which torque to four newton meters, four or four and a half newton meters. Uh, we'll put those three little eight mil nuts on. We're gonna torque down this harness, uh, six newton meters for that. And basically everything else is almost there. We'll get the intercooler seated. We'll get the fan in, the belts on, the crank bolt capture on once we get the vacuum cap. Uh, we do have to do downpipes and a tune on this car as well. So you'll be watching us do that as well. 
Uh, we're gonna move on to that here shortly. Basically, the crank hub job is essentially done. A few little things like this will get clipped in here. Lines run underneath the intake manifold. The fuel rail to the head was torqued down to 13 newton meters. The big 17 mil nuts are 30 newton meters, and these guys to each injector are 24 newton meters. So uh, all that stuff's been torqued and ready to go. So we're almost there, guys. Let's go ahead and wrap this thing up and get it started. All right, guys, this is the crank pin plug. We're gonna go ahead and reinstall that back into the car. It's all by feel. It's blind up in there, but nonetheless, fairly easy to get it in. You'll kind of just stick it up in that same hole where your crank pin goes and uh, wiggle it in. All right, guys, there it is in the hole. All good. That's where it is, right there, just above the oil pan. So that's all good. We're gonna finish butting up the bottom side here. We'll get this oil cooler bolted in and uh, continue with the fan. We have been trying to clean out as much of this gunk up in here. When you do this job, it's a good chance to uh, clean all that gunk out, the road grime and debris. Um, but yeah, everything's basically in, almost done here. Just a few little things to button up. And then uh, we're working actually on these down pipes. I've already gone ahead and pulled the bolts that hold the clamps. Let's see, you can't see right about. Ah, should have oil drop in my eye. Um, but yeah, right there is the clamp. Um, and right to the right of my finger right there is where the bolt was. Bolt's already moved. O2 sensor's already hanging. I just gotta disconnect the back ones here. They run up around over here. You just unclip the wires out of these little hangers. And now we're gonna undo the four 10 mil bolts there and the T30s, this bracket to allow this thing to come down and these E10s to allow the mid pipe to come down. That'll give us enough room just to fish these down pipes out of there. So let's go ahead and do that and uh, keep moving on. All right, guys. All right, guys, oil cooler is in, torqued to 13 foot pounds. We got the oil draining right now and then we'll do the oil filter and get these down pipes out get that vacuum cap in get the fan in and the belts on and full of oil and take this thing for its maiden voyage so i just want to show you real quick the crank bolt capture won't a lot of the time the very first time you put it up there line up with the holes you'll have to uh take it off see these uh let me see if I can get my finger in these extra splines here. You can rotate this all the way around until the holes line up. I had to take it off one time and rotate it one keyway to get the bolts to line up. But this is what it should look like. Before you start throwing bolts in it, make sure all your bolt holes are lining up. So now that that's lined up, we're gonna go ahead and torque that down to 25 foot pounds. Quick look at the belt routing. So it goes around the crank pulley up around the tensioner, up over the alternator, down around the idler pulley, back around the AC compressor, and then down over the secondary idler tensioner, or idler pulley, and down around the crank pulley again. Uh, it's very tight for this back belt. I recommend putting it over the alternator last, um, or the tensioner, your choice, but uh, it is gonna be very tight. Now, as far as the water pump belt goes, you just have to rotate this pulley Right now you can see it's very slack. I can take it on and off easy. Seven eighths wrench. I'm gonna put it on this nut here. I'm gonna rotate the water pump over until it pops into the location we need. You'll hear it snap, kind of pop into place right now. And you guys just heard that audible sound. Now the belt is tight and all of our bolt holes will line up. We'll throw our four 10 millimeter bolts in there, torque those down, I believe it's 10 newton meters. Um, and then we will put our fan in, clip in our water lines that clip to our fan here. There's one clamp here that goes to the line down here. Make sure to put those clamps on, they help hold everything in place. Clip all our other lines on, our upper hoses, lower hoses, all this stuff, and fill it full of coolant. And then we are done. Put our intakes in and whatnot, but yeah, we're almost there guys, let's get it done. All right guys, we got seven quarts of liquid moly in it, a fresh oil filter, water pump bolts have been torqued to 10 newton meters, 
We're ready to go ahead and install our fan. So let's go ahead and get that fan in. Quick little look at how it looks in there. So you can see uh, our crank pulley has also been torqued to 25 foot pounds. You can see all the bolts are in. guys down pipes are out Give you guys a quick look we uh, got to just swap over these O2 sensors to the CTS down pipes which I'll show you here in a second and then uh, throw it all back together we just drop the mount here for the exhaust you got two E10s we remove the cross member here six bolts there and two 13 millimeter nuts here at the back and one eight mil uh, to get this exhaust to drop like this. Just set it on a pole stand and uh, we're gonna get these down pipes in. All right guys, here are the CTS Catalyst down pipes or race pipes, whatever you wanna call them. See the nice CTS placard here, all TIG welded. Got a gasket and little bracket piece that slips over this piece here. We'll slip over the end there. This is the front down pipe, the longer one. Same thing, very nice construction. Got a little CTS placard so you know who made it. Nice high flowing stuff here. The kit does come with new hardware to join the exhaust here to the rest of the system. It also comes with a couple plugs in case you aren't running O2 sensors for whatever reason. Um, yeah, that's kind of the gist. These two pieces and that's about it. So let's get these on the car. First things first, we gotta get the O2 sensors out of the old cat and put them in here. Let's go ahead and do this. All right guys, down pipes are in, exhaust is tight, mount is tight here. We're wrapping up the last exhaust mounts here. Put this bracket in, everything is good. The O2 sensors are all ran the correct way and clipped in, see them here. Uh, but we're gonna go ahead and Bring the car down. We put all the underbelly pans on and the stiffening pleats. Got a bunch of eight mil screws across the front here and around the sides of this pan. We have these 13s here and then these 16 mil bolts here. All been torqued to spec. So let's go ahead and bring her down and get this thing on the road. All right guys, here's a quick look at the wiring harness coming up across the valve cover, routed in here correctly. Make sure as well, if you guys are doing this job, that you route your O2 sensor for the rear thing all the way, or for the rear down pipe all the way down here. Yeah, there it is. Now we're gonna put the charge pipes in. Everything is done, basically. All right guys, car is basically done. We still have to put the carbon strut base in and uh, put our coolant caps on, but we're gonna bleed the cooling system right now. This is a quick look at what it looks like, all wrapped up. We've got our charge pipes in and tight. We've got our line here clipped in. You got this line that'll clip into your rubber seal at the back, but basically everything's in. O2 sensors are clipped in, mass airflow sensors clipped in, vacuum lines, everything. So uh, let's go ahead and test fire her. 